so basically we are going to see the random forest example now so in last session we have seen the theoretical part of random forest that how it creates multiple decision trees and based on the outcomes of decision tree it gives you the uh, output uh, depending upon what is the mood of the all the decision mode trees out or sums right so now we are going to see a practical example a practice example on python that how you can implement random forest by by using sql and library and how can you you know predict the class for some data set from some for some uh, data points so here i will explain you initially i will tell you the what is the application what is the problem which we are targeting so this is the data set which we are on which we will be working if you see this data set it has how many samples it has 178 samples okay mm -hmm. and this particular data set is called as wine data set okay wine data set wine wine of okay. course so so there there are three kinds of wine basically wine 1 wine 2 wine 3 just an example i'm saying three kinds of wines are there so the first column of all these samples you see is the wine class mm -hmm, yes three so three two and one okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are three wine classes okay now mm -hmm. the rest other things the 13 features 1 2 3 4 5 this this one 6 7 8 9 10 11 to 13 so there are in total between value in each row where the first value is basically the class number as one okay. and the rest 13 values are the features now you will say what are those features of wine so these are these features basically alcohol content alcoholic acid content ash alkaline of ash magnesium phenol flavonoid non flavonoid phenol this one this one this one this one this one these are some chemical you know the chemical which are used there used in wine so what is the percentage of what is the you know values of this this is used as the features of wine okay now and and the, the classes are this wine one wine two wine three okay yeah so this particular data set what we have to do we have to train a model if suppose this is the training data if suppose in an application you are to 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 make a software which will classify that which type of wine it is so you can build a random forest model huh. so how are we going to uh, you know have this model and you know train the model and test it we will do it so first uh, have you heard of pandas library I, i just know that that's it uh, i don't i don't know how to do the i heard about pandas so yeah so basically pandas is a library which is used to read i mean values from csv files comma separated files or excel files okay mm -hmm. so when data is written in an excel or or a csv you can read mm -hmm. it through pandas panda oh, we can see. read it through pandas what we can read it through pandas right yes pandas is basically a library which is 
used to read the whole CSV or whole Excel files in a data frame and through that data frame you can do a lot of statistics, a lot of analytics, cleaning, <laughs> those kind of things you can do. Okay. So here I have imported pandas and through pandas I am reading the CSV. PD dot read CSV. I'm reading the CSV and this is basically the wine data dot txt file separated by commas and this I have read it here in data frame. Okay. Now the CO index, basically the first column I have taken in Y because that's my label, right? One, two, three. That's a class. Oh yeah. On all the 170 data send, I mean data points, the first column tells me the Y, and the one to fifteen columns tell me X. Yes. <laughs> now this I lock method and all you we will finding here these are the methods to access the index in in with panda data frame you won't find normally I and mean, you won't find normally this kind of thing in python okay but but with data frame with panda data frame you can go through the locations in the data frame, in the Python data frame like this. Right? Mm -hmm. Basically what I am doing is I am taking the classes separately in Y and the features separately in X. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now these are the, the feature names which I have made. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this, this, uh, this is again a numpy array of these strings. And uh, this, this is again a numpy array for the class labels 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. Okay? Now, uh, if, if I show you uh, with that sys command, I am doing nothing here, but this part I am just, uh, you know, visualizing my data set. So if I run this, you will find something like this. See? Mm -hmm. This is, see, now the question will come into your mind, maybe, that how are you able to visualize a data which has 14 dimensions, 14 features, not 14, 13 features. So a 13 feature dimension, how are you able to visualize in 2D? I cannot visualize 13 dimensions in 2D. So what actually I am doing, I am only taking two features, magnesium and alkalinity of ash from this 13. See here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You see, here I am taking only two columns, right? Three and four. Suppose I give it five and a nine. I will also change the labels so the name will appear correctly. See, now I am taking the fifth one, this total yeah. because. Total five. Mm -hmm. And the ninth one. When I say 5, it means the indexing starts from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Total of all and 6, 7, 8, 9. This may be color intensity. Mm -hmm. So I am just checking with two features with how the data is separated. You see, this is how the data is separated with total phenol and color intensity. Mm -hmm. You can take any two variable and check, I mean, how... You, you can take any variable and uh, just check how this, uh, you know, uh, uh, how this data set is, you can visualize and, and you can see that how these data points are separated in the space in respect to the any two features which you need. Okay? Yeah. 
So this is just the plot plt scatter function which is doing this. I mean you are taking the axis, I mean you are taking the data, the fifth column and the ninth column. Fifth in x-axis and ninth color intensity in y-axis. And you are giving it color red, blue, and blue to the labels. Whatever labels you have now, one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 that you are giving it the labels mm -hmm. here. Hmm. And uh, yeah, these are just the type of YAC. In, in anything, this title, Wine Data Set, you can set it like here. Color intensity here. Sorry, X label is total phenol. Y label, teacher names mine, which is color intensity. Like that. Legend is this is called legion. Wine one, wine two, wine three. So this you can also use. So anyway, visualization you can always do. Uh, now after this, what I will do? We have read our data. If you see, we have read our data in the pandas, uh, this data frame through pandas data frame I have read. And then I have converted into a NumPy array here in Y and X, isn't it? The classes, the class name has come into Y and the features, 13 features are, have come in X, right? So, if, if I start here now, first initially I will split it into train test set 8020 rule. You remember we have seen this rule somewhere in previous sessions. Yes. With this 8020 rule what happens, whatever your data is, suppose you have a data set of 778 samples. You will separate 20% for testing and 80% for training. training. So now if you look at this particular code, here with the train test split, which is again of library here, yeah, this one. SQLearn dot model selection input train test split. Okay. So if you see this library, train test library, you just pass the data set here. Whatever data set was there. Uh, you just pass the data set here and you also pass the Y values in here. So test size you have given 20%. So these are the labels, these are the 178 data points, these are the labels, corresponding labels, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you pass that my testing will be done on point 0.2, basically 20% of the data. 20%. So if you return you all these variables, like this is 80% training data, and this is correspondingly the labels of 80% of training data, this is 20% of test data, and the corresponding actual Labels of the test data. Huh? Actual labels of the test data, right? The white test is the actual labels of the test data. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so th that is the actual label which has come from here. Mm -hmm. This we have read in my right? Yeah. So from there it has uh, come the actual actual test and this is also actual label but it is not the percent of the training data. Okay. Now uh, what I have done I have so decision tree also I have trained just for the comparative comparative purpose. I mean, don't think that why I will train this the decision tree we have seen right. Yes, we do. So, 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 uh, so, yeah, so decision tree uh, classifier also I have just trained for the compar comparison purpose. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and this one, uh, you see, once this random forest is trained, 
and here I have called this random forest where I am training random forest with n estimators equal to 10. Do you know what is n estimators? n estimators equal to 10 when I say it means that you have to uh, divide your data set into 10 parts, not 10 parts, 10 parts yeah. actually. Basically, uh, in the banning idea, in the random forest idea, when you saw, saw that you have to create multiple data sets from this 178 data points. Uh, uh, the process of dividing it into 10 is called bagging, right? Bagging or something. Yeah, bagging. The idea, the initial, the initial idea that we can create multiple data set from one data set, it is called bagging. Mm -hmm. then how it is created? So basically, somebody has two hundred data point. So two hundred uh -huh. data point, you randomly sample say 65, 66 percent of the data. Two third of the data you randomly sample. So just randomly sample six hundred data points from the thousand data point. The so whole thousand data point, randomly sample six hundred data point, and do it the number of time to create ten data sets. Mm -hmm. this, this was the initial idea for random forest. So, similar on the same idea, it works basically. If you give it n estimator equal to 20, it will create 20 data set by random sampling. Yes. Okay. Are you able to follow yes. today? Okay. Sorry? I mean, you are able to follow, na? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, here I am going to fit. The, the I mean I am going to train the random forest. When I say train the random forest means whatever 10 data multiple data set I have created through those data set I am going to you know build the decision tree lots of decision tree. So I have made 10 multiple data sets so I will be training 10 independent decision trees on those data sets. Mm -hmm. I am going to train 10 decision tree on the 10 multiple data sets which are created. Okay. Okay. So, and, and then the 20% of the data which we have kept it for testing, through that I am going to predict it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so the, again, the, this is this is the uh, this is how I am going to predict it on twenty percent of the data. Now, confusion matrix you remember, right? Where the diagonal elements yes. were used to tell the you know actual true positive. Yeah, mm -hmm. true, or true positive, and the non-diagonal elements are usually the error. So, so that confusion matrix again, I am printing there, right? Mm -hmm. I will show you. See here. So this is the consumer matrix of decision tree. This is the consumer matrix of random forest. So I just want to show you how they will look like. And remember, this is not K cross hole validation. This is 80 20 rule testing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, this is the visualization part. You see how it looks like. This confusion matrix is there for decision tree. So, in decision tree, if you see, there are two errors, right? Yeah. But in random forest, there is no error. No error, yes. Because decision tree is just a single tree is getting trained and you have to rely on that. Mm -hmm. in, in random forest, you have 10 such decision trees. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. you can, now you can rely on what 10 people are saying, right? I Have I given you the example of that real estate which Are one? You buying a real estate property. Mm -hmm. While while we were seeing this random forest theoretically. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. He gave me the example where I said that if you are willing to buy a piece of land. You will take yeah. advice, or you will take suggestions or decisions from lot of people: the broker, the owner, your parents, your family, your wife, or or your friend, or a guy who has invested there, right? So, mm -hmm. depending upon lot of things, you will be doing. I mean, you will be giving. Uh, you know, you will be taking decisions from lot of people. So, you cannot just rely on one guy for your output. What mm -hmm. if that guy doesn't train well or that doesn't know much? So then you will go wrong. So so that's why the idea of random forest came now. When we had one digital tree, people said that why not train different different trees? And then check among them yes, what yes. what people are saying. Then the the relying part will be shown. So see, mm -hmm. the one these these errors which were made by you know vision tree one one year and one year, these errors are compensated by this random forest. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we will again moving ahead. We will see the same thing with K cross fold validation. Mm -hmm. In K cross fold validation, just to brush up. What we have seen in in earlier uh, models, in K cross fold uh, validation, basically uh, you have this. Uh, in the, you split your data set into ten part. Nine part you use it for training, and ten part you use it for testing. Testing. Yeah. So on the nine part of training. Basically, you will be using decision tree or random forest, and then the ten part, which is the fifth part, basically, on that you will be doing testing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you see, here I am initializing the model of stratified K cross fold, K fold, with ten steps. That it will it will create ten data sets of these one seventy eight points. There are 178 points, right, in this data set. So it will create 10 mm -hmm. equal partitions for this data set, and nine parts it is going to use for training and one part for testing. So the, here, here you see in this loop, this loop will run 10 number of times. Mm -hmm. And from the stratified K cross fold. You know, variable model. I am splitting this x and y. So your train index and test index will be basically nothing but 80%. Uh, train index will be 90% of the data, and test index will be 10% of the data. Isn't it? Because this splitting will combine the nine partitions it has made. So initially it will make 10 partitions because n is split system. Now nine we will combine in train index and one we will combine in test index. Okay. Is the same here that x is the uh, uh, futures and y is the class? Yes. The same variable are carried forward. See this variable. Yeah. Actually, in the same program, I have shown you both the ways how to do it with X twenty mode and how to do it with K cross four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This x and y is the same, and through the train index we are getting the x train, and through the test index we are getting the x test. Mm -hmm. And similarly, y train and y test, mm -hmm. because that now the testing is going to happen at 10% of the data. So for that, this y x test and y test are also taken. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then same thing. Call the classifier, fit the classifier, and then predict the classifier. I mean, predict through that classifier on your test data on the 10% of the data, and this will go the number of time in loops. See, there is a for loop, right? Mm -hmm. So every time it will be taking one partition, one uh, new partition for testing. Fine, good enough. Yeah, yeah. 
but we didn't write any for loop. We didn't write the number of observations is posted to ten. Right? Yeah, yeah, that that you don't need to write because this SKS split will automatically create ten partition and this for loop will be okay. written through ten. It iterates through the that function. Yeah, yeah. Escape or split or. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah, of course you didn't write that thing that okay how it is doing, but but that SQL not split takes care of that part because n students here you are given ten. So it will run, it will run ten times only, and every time it will change the test partition. Okay. Nine partitions it will keep it for running, but the tenth one will every time change. Now here you have you know trained the random forest, the the decision tree both and trained it and predicted it and and uh, in each iteration I am also generating the confusion matrix on one partition mm -hmm. and then I am mm -hmm. combining it with the total matrix for decision tree and total matrix for random forest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting the confusion matrix for doing them also and adding them. Mm -hmm. So after this for loop, after this for loop, if you see this total net DT and total mat RF, we will get the you know uh, uh, the full data set tested matrix. Mm -hmm. Matrix tested on full data set. So what I will do, I will show you this one. What happened with 10 crores? Mm -hmm. Now you, you are basically testing on all the 178 data points in an accumulated way, like adding the 10 mm -hmm. each partition, I mean, testing of each partition we are adding, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that total net variable dt and rf this is this so can you see the accuracy now here there are a lot of mistakes may be done by the vision tree where i have random forest in total makes six wrong results it's mm -hmm. but in this country if you see the in total eight and then yeah Almost 18 examples went wrong. So the decision to accuracy is 90%. Random forest accuracy is 96.6%. Uh, what is total uh, total decision to and total random forest? Yeah, this one. Okay. Uh, what is that? Where, where did we get it from? This one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have taken a 3 by 3 0 0 matrix. Basically. Oh, it's for, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically what I am doing, I am creating a 0 0 matrix. Mm -hmm. And I am adding. Each iteration, each iteration, how many data points will be there for testing? For testing, yeah. Some, some 17 or 18 data points will be there, right? Mm -hmm. So suppose these data points are denoted like this. So suppose 17 are there, right? So in each iteration, there will be some result like this. Mm -hmm. So this will keep getting added in this 10 number of time in each iteration. Uh, okay, for 10 iterations. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
This is basically a three by three matrix, which is giving the result on just seventeen or eighteen data point in, in iterations, and it is being added to total math RF every time. And here I have taken the total math RF three by three. Okay, and that is what it is printed. Finally, when you print it outside the loop here. Mm -hmm. It gets printed like this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you have to print it. I, I am printing it the total mat DT or total mat RF outside the loop. Once all the time you mm -hmm. have been provided, you know, they have been the output has been added. Over. So this final output I am printing. Okay. Finally, I am coming to this point. You might have seen me last time also this, right? For decision tree, have I shown you? For decision tree, have I shown you the graph? Yes, indeed, yeah. So same thing for decision tree as well as random forest. I am seeing you. The CLF is what? This is a tree classifier. Yeah. The model name is this is a tree classifier. So this variable I am passing into tree dot export graph this, mm -hmm. and I have also used feature names and class names and you know everything. And so I am writing this PDF. Why this is a tree classifier? And I have also you know. Said fill equal to true. Fill equal to true means you have to show the colors of the class also. So this decision tree I am printing graphically. How basically whatever is getting trained, that that it will show. But what is it actually which is trained? Okay. And. Very interestingly, if you see, in uh, this random forest has how many trees? This is a tree we be training random forest. Random forest is basically forest is what basically a group of trees. So how many this is a tree it will train here? Ten. Ten. Because I, as I told you. That property example, you are now relying on ten decision trees rather than just one. Yes. So all these ten decision trees also I can make graph. Again, see in the case of in the case of uh, this decision tree, I didn't have to perform any loop because it is just one decision tree. Mm -hmm. Here I am again performing loop. Ten number of time because it has ten estimators, ten decision tree it has, and each decision tree. If you see estimator, I am taking in iterations ten number of time. Every time I am taking this estimator and I am exporting with the graph with the graph is. Now this will generate a dot data, and this dot data you can convert into PDF. I mean a graph with pi dot plus library, and then you can write PDF of it. Good enough? This I am doing for all the decision trees in the random. The second one, the the for loop is for the what? The loop is for the random random forest, right? And the above one is for the decision tree. So, so, yeah. I mean, can you say what again? Like what you are asking? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the for loop, uh, the for loop is for the random forest one, and the the dot data is for the decision tree one, right? Yeah, this one is for decision tree. Yeah, and the for loop is for the random forest one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and from here you have random forest. 
Hmm. So it will it will go ten number of time, right? Because there are ten estimators, so it will loop around ten number of times. Every time it will print a graph. Now let's have a look on how it looks like. Why in data set decision tree? Yeah, this can you see this one? Yes, yes. See. Okay, are you able to see this graph clearly? Can you, yeah. can you read this? The first one is pro, yeah. pro line is less than equal to. Yeah, so this is basically your feature. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is basically your feature on which it has done the splitting. So if it is true, it will go this side. If it is false, it will go this side. Mm -hmm. If you remember, there there were 14, 13 such features, right? Yeah, total of 13 features. Mm -hmm. And in this, there is a feature proline. Mm -hmm. Now the question is why Last did feature. yeah the question is why did it selected proline only? Yes. If if someone asks you that why it is splitted on proline, why not? Flavonoid or malic acid or anything other. You remember when we studying about decision tree, we studied about something called as information gain. Yeah, the information. Okay, yeah. We do know in that. So we have seen the information gain. So what it does, it will uh -huh. take all the 13 features. It will consider all the 13 features and mm -hmm. And it will calculate the giving index and the uh, information gain which is, is going to get. So for whichever feature the information gain is highest, it will show you that. Okay. I mean, for whichever feature the information gain will be high, it will split on that feature. Yes. Now. Uh, so so now once see and how many data points are there in total? In total, 178. No, here, how many it has taken? 162. 162. Why? Where are the rest 16? So, in 178, I have taken 162 data point for training and 16 data point I have taken for testing. Testing, yes. So that is why if by training there is only 162 data point and these data points are separated like this. 54 from class 1, 64 from class 1, class 2 and 44 from 1, class 3. Mm -hmm. And when you split them with this four line, it will become now this. 102 samples are there which has pro line less than 755 value. And out of this 102, you see, this is the distribution. 40 data points of mm -hmm. one type, wine 3 type, 60 data of wine 2 type, and just one, uh, two samples of wine 2 type, wine, wine uh, 1 type, wine 1, wine 2, wine 3. Now, in this side, there were 60 such samples. Which had pro lines greater than So for them again the samples were 60 and so if you went like that the value becomes 5244. I mean out of these 60 samples which has pro line greater than 755, in that 52 were of class one. Oh, yes. It's an important decision here, right? Mm -hmm. So similarly, again, you will calculate the gain of this node, and again, we will perform the same information gain criteria. And this time, you will find that flavonoids with flavonoids, I am getting the more area. Mm -hmm. With flavonoids, I am getting the more information gain, basically. Mm -hmm. so so you keep on going dividing this data set 
keep on going developing data set until and unless you find all the leaf nodes as a pure node. Pure nodes. Yeah. Can, what are the leaf nodes? Can you point out? See, this is leaf node, right? The guinea, yeah, the guinea is zero. Then. Yes, all the nodes where guinea is zero are leaf node, and you can also say leaf node when there is no further splitting. See, guinea zero, zero. Yeah. Zero, 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 zero. zero, zero. All these are. And what are the what are the colors telling? Can you signify colors? Uh, colors. Uh, which uh, they are divided by classes, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. You are right. This this brown color is class one, mine one. And, and the blue one is basically mine three, and the green one is mine two. Now question: How can you see that this is mine one class, the brown one? How do you come to know that this is class one? I mean, mine one class. And and we should give it a brown color. So so we said that okay, class wine one, we will give it a brown color. So now, but how do you know that wine one is the class? If you see, in all these uh, number majority, ones, yeah, yes, the majority of the out of sixty samples, fifty two samples are from class one. Here, out of fifty four samples, fifty two samples are of class one. Here, out of fifty two, yeah. all are Last one. Yeah. So, so that's the status. And if you see, if you see this one, here out of 54, 38 are of class three, right? Yes, yes. That's why it is blue in color. Now, what about the transparency part? This is dark blue. This is little light blue. Yes. 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 Why? Why is it so? Again, this is mm. really pure green. I mean, these are like dark green. It has, yeah. It has only the one. I mean, only one class in the. Yes. In the whole. I mean, yes. so it, it has only one class. Class. Right. Yes. So the the transparency depends upon the purity of node. If I make this statement, is this statement correct? The the. the yes. Transparency of the color depends upon the purity of the node. Purity if the of... node is pure, it will be a perfect color, dark color. If your node is yes. pure, it's it's not only one class. If there are other classes also, then it will become light. And and if the distribution is even see in in this example. The distribution is very really bad, right? I mean, the second, the third wine and the second wine have lots of data. Yes, sir. So the color is, you know, a little light. Lighter. Lighter. Here also, you see, there are from class one also two is there, and from class three also two is there. So this is also again light. So in in decision tree while decision tree when I showed you the graph it was very plain graph isn't it I mean no color nothing yeah there was no color here yeah. yeah now in with random forest I thought to represent it in a better way uh, so that's why I came up with this and in that decision tree graph you if you see these these are written as x3 x4 x9 like this. <laughs> The names were not there. Here, if you see the code, I am giving here the names, right? The feature names equal to feature names while making the graph. So that is why you are able to see these feature names: Proline, mm -hmm. OD280, this one, this one. If you go and see the decision tree, you will find here it is the index of the feature which is written there okay like x3 x0 x1 like that yeah yeah yes yes okay so 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 this is how the graph will look like so this is wine decision tree okay mm -hmm. which gives you 90% of accuracy this one 
Now, now same thing we have done for random forest also, but the only difference is random in random forest you have ten such and decision trees. Right. So now let's have a look on this. Can you see this? Yeah. So this, these are the random forest tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. There are in total ten. You know, here I was writing the name like wine RF tree, and then whichever iteration is there, string part and then dot PDF I have combined. So that's why the name has come like this. Wine RF three zero, wine RF three one, wine RF three three like that. And if you see, all of them is some some or the other decision tree, and everyone is little different. You can see these, these like uh, these yeah. three, right? Yeah. So every decision tree has been built on some other data set. Ten data set randomly we have, I mean, random through random, we have randomly chosen, right? From the 178 data point, we have randomly sampled 60% uh, of the data in one data set and then like that we have created multiple data set by random sampling, right? This is this random sampling part is uh, uh, called as bootstrapping, bootstrapping the samples. You see how many how many samples are taken here in the in the random forest? Initially, how many samples are taken? One ten. One ten. So these one ten samples are basically randomly taken from that one seventy eight data points. Okay. So th this is how you can you know visualize your trees of random forest also. And and this also tells you that which are the features which are more important, isn't it? Like the color intensity is more important than proline, maybe than alcohol, maybe right? Hello? Yeah. 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 Sometimes the audio connection is getting lost. So, can you hear me? Hello. Great. So, so that's what uh, like uh, this also. What I was telling is, what I was telling you is this also tells you the importance of the features. Okay. But which are the features which are more important? Like, see, the color intensity is more important than alcohol, than proline, right? And this, these like alkalinity of ash and all may not be that important. Okay? Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's all with the random forest. What I will do, uh, see, what I will do, uh, I will send you this wine data set file, okay. At your end, you can try, you know, running on a spider these, this code. And, uh, yeah. 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 So, so basically what I'm saying, you, you can try this, uh, you know, writing codes on your own maybe on this data set and, and see what, how the accuracies are coming. Okay. I don't know what happened to this audio.